everyone. Welcome back to Bourbon Barrel Talk. I'm your host, Scott Minton. Today, we're back in the Brock Bourbon Bar, and we are drinking some Buffalo Trace. That's rack. Mash bill number one, mash bill number two, and we found out today it's a weird conglomerate of one and two redistilled in one of these. So uh, we're just going to dive right in. We're going to start off with uh, our bottle number one, which is going to be Blanton's. Bottle number two is going to be Buffalo Trace, and bottle number three is going to be John J. Bowman. Pioneer Spirit, Virginia Straight Bourbon Whiskey. So that's kind of what's going on. And uh, today's three motley crude looking mother truckers. We got Carl, Johnny Tsunami, and Nick the Shocker Brock. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I tell you, Scott, I've got the Pioneer Spirit within me today. I bet you do. <laughs> John, shut up. <laughs> go go well, where no which, which man pi- has gone, bo- gone before. <laughs> which pioneer which, which pioneers in you? Uh, Lewis and Clark. Lewis and both. Clark. <laughs> wow. That would be two of them and I'm not I'm not that big. <laughs> wow. All right. Anyway. So this is went off the rails. <laughs> Already. Anyway, so we're gonna try Two ma- the the two most common mash bills for for Sazerac slash Buffalo Trace products, and uh, we're trying um, for the first time on the show. Actually, I, I can't believe we've never actually reviewed it, but the John J. Bowman, so which is the Virginia Straight Bourbon Whiskey, which is a oddly enough, we read it. It is mash bill number one, mash bill number two, then sent to Virginia to be redistilled both of those together to make the Bowman series. And I think it's the reason why for that is so that it could say Virginia straight, straight whiskey. whiskey. Yeah. yeah. So crazy, crazy. Is this a newer bourbon or is this? No, it's out? been out for no, a while. No, bourbon series has been out for years. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's just, it's uh, it's not readily available a lot of places. Uh, well, I mean, it's the port semi really. Is. Yeah, the port is. But yeah, the, their single barrels and some of their other like uh, more exotic releases that they had early it's a little on bit harder to come are by. way harder to come by gotcha. i mean like the cash you, you never in, see yeah unless you're in virginia they're really hard to find okay tennessee i heard gets a fair amount of them but i don't know i can see that well virginia is regulated so they have to go to those uh the abc yeah. uh stores yeah. so abc easy as one two three all right good deal all right blanton's so weirdly on the note, it's, it's been a while since i've uh just kind of sit down and kind of studied you know most people just pour and start sipping they don't really take a second to kind of sniff it a little bit and kind of go through it but i'm almost almost getting kind of like a sweet hay or uh kind of like a sweet field greens out of it yeah i I get a little bit of that i get the sweetness part to me it's more more than hay or that like that field green i get like a raw tobacco like or young tobacco like it's like freshly grown yeah Yeah, freshly grown yeah like fresh 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 just cut hanging in the barn it's got a little bit of caramel. And there's just a little bit of a weird spice in there that at least this bottle is. I this get a one little was bit of like honeysuckle in there. And this one was barreled in 2021. How long has this one been open, Nick? I will say it's been open about a year. About a year. All right. All right. The more I know on it, the baking spices come through a lot. So I'm saying I'm getting a little bit of baking spice there, which is interesting because I know preconceived notions about blends is that it's never been really good. But, you know, it's, it's, especially if you it, age it, let it age and open a little bit, I think it actually matures a little bit. It's not that Blanton's is not good. It's the fact that it's just slightly overrated. People go crazy for it because of the pony, the horse, you know, all that type of stuff. The bottle is very unique. You, the bottle's very you unique. You got some Blanton's. Get yeah, some, you got, got some Blanton's. Exactly. They're like crackheads <laughs> from, you know. But if you get straight from the barrel and all that stuff, now that's a completely different thing. Oh, absolutely. Straight from the barrel is a totally different monster for yeah. sure. You know, but Outside of like the Indiana and Kentucky area, is it is it more readily available no. in different places? No. Or do we have it's, more of it here? No, I, I would say we probably get more in the Kentuckiana area mm-hmm. than probably most of the other part of the country. Unless you're going out of the country. Yeah. Well, out of the country, there's some certain Blanton's they just, they just only send overseas. Yeah. So. Yeah, you got your reds, your blacks, the greens, um, I think there's silver. A, yeah, mm-hmm. silver. Yeah, really. Wow. And then uh, the other one. There's that's a navy blue one I've seen. It may have been, been a special. That's run. Poland. Poland. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then you have your uh, locally. You have your golds, and then straight from the barrel. So like this, I mean, I drink it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a perfectly no. good pour, but it just it it doesn't have the same complexity. But a lot of the other bourbons we try. There's not Agreed. much on the front. There's not any on the back to me. Yep. It's just a little bit in the middle with a little bit of baking spice. No burn, nothing like that. Just a little bit of 
I got flavor of that. I, I think the big thing and, and the big difference for me is with these is just I think we are we've all become so accustomed to high proof bourbon <laughs> that when we yeah. drink something that's ninety to a hundred proof, we don't always necessarily appreciate it for what it is or less. I mean, right. this is what eighty six? Right. No, ninety three. Isn't it? Yeah, forty six and a half proof. Yeah, think, okay, yeah. So, but yeah, and like I said, it's a it's a fine solid bourbon. That being said, it's still less than what I would want in a typical situation. Yeah. If I'm going that proof, it's going to be, uh, oh, what's the one that you, that liquor barn has the. My favorite. Yeah. Hancock's Reserve. Yeah. Yeah. By far the the much more rich tobacco, caramel, those flavors. This is, you know, it, it, to me, this almost tastes like a watered down version of Hancock's. It's the same Mm -hmm. mash bill and it's actually a higher proof, which just seems weird. It is. And you really wouldn't drink this every day just because of, the price point, yeah. price I mean, point, sitting at a, by, you know, I mean, yeah. r- r- now, I mean, it's over a hundred, seventy it's a, bucks retail. It's, it's, it's about you know that's what you know seventy bucks out the door because it's usually coming in around six, sixty four to sixty six. Yeah, and somewhere it's there. hard to find them at that. And usually it's sixty nine ninety nine plus tax, and yeah. that's on the low side of retail. Yeah, yeah, most places. Like, secondary is one fifty to two hundred. I've seen all the uh, uh, no, it's still secondary. I've seen one twenty five. Well, I might have saw maybe now the liquor store we were just at. has a one ninety nine. Yeah, oh really? Well, yeah. yeah, no, that, that's, that's there's been a few of them I've seen like that. But no, online you can you can or on the secondary market you can get them from about one ten. I think right now the new one's one ten. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the case. All right, second pour Buffalo Trace standard mash bill number one. The liquor barn pick. This is a store pick. This actually is a store pick. Let's give a give a little press there for the old LB. I also get a little bit of that young it's been young age for about tobacco. A year and a half. Nick. Yeah. Do you get that? It's, it's got kind of a very similar nose. Similar nose to the blend as a young age tobacco, a little bit of sweetness. Yep. I get a little bit more pronounced in the nose. The, yeah. The, it's a little bit more leather. Yeah. I get I, I, it's, it, I a little get bit more, more stronger tobacco. and yeah. deeper nosing out of it. From yeah. Those. And it's we're not going sweet from, to me. Yeah. And the funny thing is we're actually dropping down in proof. We're going from 93 to 90. Which usually doesn't tend to be the case unless there is an yep. age difference. Yeah. Which I, I don't think there is. I think they're actually both around six years old. I would say so. Is this also a 2022, you said? Shit, who knows? Uh, this one's like 2020, 2021. A little yeah. bit older. Yeah, I think I opened it in 21. Okay. Who's got the first pull in? There's a little bit of baking spices on the mid palate. It's got a lot more richness up front compared to the Latins. The back palate's got a little bit. It lingers a little bit on the mid palate, but not much to me. It's a little tobacco. Serviceable pour. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Easy drinker. Caramel, a little bit of tobacco, got a, a small hint of leather, a little bit of oak, small hint of vanilla. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a solid pour if you can find it. Yep. Well, Buffalo Trace is fairly easy to find. Now, a store pick would be harder. Store pick's a little bit harder, but I mean, I will say of late, you, I have seen more cases around. Now, yeah. do, we, do we think that's the the? I think the, the Indiana side, you find more than you do on the Louisville side. At least the, the stores I go to, I can find. Buffalo Trace on this side. Uh, you go to Louisville, it's always one per person, and they usually don't have it for whatever yep. reason. Yeah. I've seen Buffalo Trace the last two times I've been at Meyer. I can't say that. Well, yeah. I, I, would say, I would say over the past three to six months, there has been a change. And I think uh, we did a prior podcast on pro- possibly why the changes are happening. Yeah, for sure. All right, John J. Bowman. So why were why you all are sniffing on John J. Bowman? I'm actually pouring one and two together. So so side experiment while it's happening. So, side experiment while we're happening here to see how much. I wonder. I'm just curious if it tastes anything like the John Bowman. So this one's a hundred proof. So it's actually the strongest one. It's got much more of a little pop on the nose. Oh, absolutely. I, I get got a, some rice spice. I get more corn on it. Yeah, it's got some corn. Yeah, the get, color get, on this one's better. Yep. I wonder how old this one is. We can do some. Uh, it's got kind of that investigation. That corn pudding. Um, I was going to say, so I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. Corn casserole. Mm. Okay. I'll yeah, because I, I don't think it's as sweet as a corn pudding. Yeah. No. And I and I think it's as you, you said the, that corn casserole. That corn casserole with like mixed with cornbread and. I, yeah, I was yeah. say I was leaning cornbread. It's kind of a little bit more doughiness. Yeah, to it's got it some doughiness. I get a little sweet. bit of like. Okay. Uh, like a mid-body cigar or something on the smell. Yeah, it's got a little bit of tobacco, like some sweet tobacco, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's definitely the, the richest of the noses, I think, oh, of the I'd three. Actually, I'd really like to enjoy this with an acid cigar. Mm. I think those the, the acid, the sweet sweet uh, tendencies that those acids have would be really nice with pairing with this. So, oddly enough, this has much more of a rice spice than either one of the other two. Yeah. 
It does. And I don't know if it's because it's taken to that 100 proof level or if it's the blending of the two. Or the, the additional distilling of it. Or the, or the second distillation run. Yep. It's, it's definitely got some, some complexity to it. You, you could almost fool me that this was a, a high rye bourbon. Yeah. 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 I mean, definitely no, it's not. It can't be more than a lot more than the yeah. other two. 10 to 12%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sits on the back palate and lingers there for a right. while. Yep. It's definitely unique. It's got, it's got some complexity for sure. It's got like a, some type of sweetness up front. I just don't know. Mid palate is there, but the back palate's where it comes into its own, I guess, to me. Yeah. yeah. It, the funny thing is like the, the, the tobacco, that leather, like in that mid palate is, uh, it's almost wasted with the amount of spice that's on the front side. Yeah. It, it kind of gets masks. By yeah. It, it gets it, masks because it's almost like a, a spicy, like florally medicinal, like front palate, which kind of takes away from that mid palate, which it has some nice mid palate, but it's almost missing something on it. It kind of reminds me of a, um, a red hot candy. Hmm. You're getting cinnamon. I'm, I don't know if I'm getting that much cinnamon. It It's, it's more of a, it's more if you could consider that a baking spice candy, even mm. though that doesn't exist. Like, okay. It, it's I th- not cinnamon. I think I understand where you're coming from. It's, yeah. It's got a bit more of a punch. It's in, got the bite. It's got the bite in the mid palate, but then it kind of just yeah. goes away. Yeah. yeah, the finish is super smooth. Yeah. It's, it's not, a, not, not a ton of complexity there. You know what the weird part is, is that this, the John J. Bowman, you know, you, you, you have your Buffalo Trace, you have your blends, and both of us described sweetness. You know, at some yep, point yeah. on it, the John J. Moment. I'm not really getting the sweetness. There's a little bit up front, but not much. Right. I, I mean, not in comparatively. There's oh, not yeah. that much. There's not that much. And I would almost. I would. I would love to put that John J. Bowman up against a rye and see if somebody could tell the difference. Of what's not a rye? Mm-hmm. It would have to be like similar proof to me. Yeah. Is that the combo? That's the combo. I think the sweetness is more on the nose than the palate. Oh, on agree. this one, definitely. So the combo is something that's just really weird. I actually like it. I like it a lot. Really? Yeah. It's almost like you take the the really, really goods out of both of them, and it kind of enhances each other. You still get the sweetness of both of them. You still get a little bit of the sweetness from both of them, but the, the, the rye has got a little bit more pop. Yeah. But it's, but it's not heavy. It's right. not heavy. No. Right. It's, it's very, very mild, but they both pop, and then you get the sweetness still. And then you get this almost like a doughy, like a weird, like complexity with some baking spice in the middle. It's kind of like a spice cake almost. I could see where you could say spice cake. Just with that doughiness with yeah. the spice brand. Yeah. I don't know. Just different. I, I think that'd be, I think it's an experiment. I think we need to try to take Mashville one and Mashville two and half it. Half it. Get some like ancient, ancient age and some Buffalo Trace. Oh, let's do ancient, ancient age. Yeah. And benchmark, not uh, foolproof. Not foolproof. Probably uh, small probably batch. Small batch or top floor. Yeah. One of I those say top floor. Top floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. And I, I think, think I think that's going to be an interesting. Blend it. Let it rest for a month or two. Yeah. So we're let... doing ancient, ancient age or just yeah. ancient age? I think you need ancient, ancient, ancient age. Okay. Like maybe the 10 star. Yeah. Does anybody have any chance? Sorry, we can no. find some. I'm sure. I All mean, right. it's not it's not crazy hard to find. Right. No, but I think I think that would be a viable experiment. That I would think you know if from what we just tasted of you blending the Buffalo Trace and Blanton's together, right, was very interesting. Definitely. It, so. it had similar qualities of the the Bowman, but it had it's it kept, it the, kept sweetness the sweetness where yeah. the Bowman lost it. Yeah, I, I will I will say I think that second distillation moved it to more. Of almost like a high rye. Yeah. It did. It definitely changed the complexity. Going back to the empty glass, it's it's got more of an herbalness to it now. I don't know if anyone else can pick that up. Oh, the John Bowman? Yeah, the Bowman. I still have a little bit left. I, I also put a little mine. bit of water in it. Let me sniff. Um, and I don't know if that was it. Yeah, I get maybe a little bit of herbalness, but the sweetness even comes through even more. Yeah. No, I'm getting a lot of sweetness on it on, on mine. Not That's a lot of weird. tobacco though. The tobacco and all those other yeah, flavor edges. Leather, leather and tobacco away. kind of went away. What kind of sweetness would you say? I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's not caramel. It's not vanilla. You know, I, I'd probably put it more in that maple syrupy type. You know, sweetness okay. on the nose. But I don't know. Is that something that a lot of other Virginia based 
I have no idea. Might have. I don't like, think. I mean, it's Kentucky Distillate. They just redistilled it in Virginia. So yeah. I mean, I, I don't, my thing is, I don't know what kind of still they use in in, in Bowman. The peanut gallery is a little giggly <laughs> over here today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, so I I think that's our review. We got to pick. Uh, we got to pick a winner. So we got one, two, three. Bowman Buffalo Blantons. Bowman Buffalo Blantons for you. Okay. If we're not throwing the. No, it's okay. A combination. No, no, we don't throw in a combo. Nick's thinking hard, man. Do you know what you got? Do you know what you got, Johnny Tsunami? I actually kind of like the blend of the Buffalo Trace and but, the Blanton. But you can't use you that. Can't use that. Yeah. Oh, I can't use that. Okay. Well, then Bowman Buffalo Blantons. I'll agree with Carl. Okay. I can't. I don't know if it was based on uh, <laughs> our peanut gallery is going a little crazy now. <laughs> I think somebody's had a little too much to drink over there. Um. I, I'm going to be a little weird. I'm going to be different. I'm going to say... Go for it. Buffalo Trace, Bowman, Blanton's. That's not too weird. I'm, and the funny thing is, I'm going to go opposite all y'all. I'm going to go Bowman, Blanton's, Buffalo Trace. Really? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, perfectly okay. fine. And so I can't, Bowman still is the overall consensus. Yeah, I, I think Bowman's the overall yeah. consensus. But yeah, I think there's a definite uh, d- division in the ranks between <laughs> Buffalo Trace and Blanton's on this one. Yeah. So, and I'm surprised I picked B- Blanton's over Buffalo Trace because I, I typically think, you know, Buffalo Trace is, you know, I don't know. But then again, I don't drink enough Blanton's anymore just because the fact that, like, I just feel like the hype is just kind of, you know, too much it's for what you're getting. It's not worth the secondary. Yeah, just not worth the secondary value. If it was yeah. our mother-in-law, she'd go Blanton's all the way. Yep. Oh, no, actually, she likes Bowman. Really? She usually drinks the port, though. Do they have a port finish? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I think it's just called Bowman Brothers or something yeah. like that is, oh, okay. is what it's yeah. titled. It's so. a burgundy label. Well, that's our episode of Bourbon Bro Talk. If you want to find us, you can find us on Facebook, the Instagram, or the Twitter. You can also subscribe by going to any of your favorite you know, outlets for podcasts, whether it be Google, Pandora, Spotify, iTunes. you got those opportunities. You can email us any questions at bourbonbrotalk at gmail.com. This is Scott, Carl, Nick, and Tsunami signing off. Peace. See you. Prost.